I'm going to tell you about the Irish people who came to Tenerife in the 17th and 18th century. And the first question is, why did the Irish people come to Tenerife? The reason, in those centuries, there was a severe religious persecution of Irish Catholic by the English Anglican, especially under Cromwell. This is the first non-Catholic cemetery in Spain, and it is here in Puerto de la Cruz. And the cemetery is still in use nowadays, and it is being looked after by the Anglican Church. This is a very old church. Uh, it is the oldest Anglican church in Spain. It was um, started in the late 19th century. There was a very large, or quite a large English community here in Puerto. Uh, long before um, travel, uh, mass travel came, there were British people living here and services used to take place at the house of the vice consul. Um, and obviously as the community grew, it was decided they needed to build a church, dedicated in 1893. In this northern coast, there were two ports, Port Garachico and Port Orotava. Unfortunately, the Port of Garachico was destroyed by a volcanic eruption in 1706. So this port became the main one. In 1651, King Felipe IV, Philip IV of Spain, declared that Port Orotava was very important for the island. In fact, he said this port was the key to Tenerife. And he allowed Port of Otaba to have its own mayor. Why was this port so important? Because from here, we could export local products, mainly Canary wine. And Canary wine was very appreciated in Europe, especially in England. Millions of litres of Canadian wine was sent over to England. The Irish merchants who came to Port Orotava in the 17th and 18th century were in competition with the British merchants who were already established here. But the Irish had an advantage. First, they were Catholic, so they were better accepted by the Spanish society. And also, they changed their names uh, into more Spanish names. Bernard Walsh became Bernardo Valois. How John McColgan became Juan Colgan. A merchant called White became Blanco. A merchant called Brug became Arroyo, which is the Spanish translation. And also the Irish gave many donations to the Catholic Church, to this church, Iglesia Nuestra Señora de la Peña de Francia is an Irish chapel. You can see up there the name Valois and on top you can see the um, emblem, the coat of arm of Ireland with the art. Puerto de la Grotava in the 20th century gradually became the busiest port on the island. The Europeans started coming mainly for health and reasons soon it turning into a whole resort, above all for people with lunch problems, especially tuberculosis, 
At the beginning, they stay in a private houses, but soon a small hotel were stirred up. And one of the first to arrive was this gentleman here. His name was Bernard Walsh. He came in the 17th century. Bernard Walsh has a daughter, and this daughter married another Irish immigrant. This immigrant was called John McColgan. This house was then known as Casa Cologan. And he, this one, this man was one of the first ones. He was a very important man in the 19th century to think about building a hotel. He was also a mayor, mayor of the town. One of the things that he did was convert his business house, this house, into a hotel. And when he died, he was a Marquess. The, his widow went on with the business of the hotel. That's why the hotel is nowadays called Hotel Marquesa. Rarely, all the Irish people became very rich businessmen and soon the local economic power was in their hands. Gradually, they obtained the political power. In fact, many of their descendants became mayors of the town. Puerto de la Cruz is the only Spanish town which had up to nine mayors of Irish descent in the 18th and 19th centuries. This is the Irish altar or the Irish chapel in this church. And here you can see St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland. And on top of the chapel, the coat of arms of Ireland with the harp. But there is much more, because here we have the tombstone of the Walsh family. Let us read Sepultura, Sepulchre de Bernardo Walsh, alias Valois y de Doña Francisca Fitzgerald, alias Geraldine, su mujer, his wife, y de sus herederos, patronos de esta capilla de San Patricio, año de 1713. Getting more and more important, eventually Puerto de la Orotava became an independent municipality adopting the official name of Puerto de la Cruz in 1812.